Let um, me say the parting words from this festive evening, which incidentally is no longer the birthday of the First Lady. <laughs> but the birthday of her father, Don Vicente Orestes Romualdez, Dean Emeritus of the College of Law of um, the University of Divine Word. Now, allow me to thank each and every one of you that you have been able to tolerate, tolerate my singing now. <laughs> uh, that's uh, the great and supreme test of your um, affection and love for <laughs> the uh, first uh, uh, lady. There is no date more sacred to me, of course, than the 2nd of July every year. No um, occasion as personally enjoyable as the celebration of the birthday of the First Lady. But uh, I'm glad of this opportunity to join with you in drinking to her health and success. I must also confess that in recent years I've been a little anxious whenever the 2nd of July draws near. For every time this date draws near, I know with certitude that it is I who will get older, while she will simply get younger and younger. <laughs> of course, you've heard of Pon, uh, Ponce de Leon, who is said to have scoured the wilds of America to find the fountain of youth and failed. He would have fared better if he had met the First Lady instead. <laughs> um, of course, a comic has said that whereas a man just takes a day off during his birthday, a woman, on the other hand, always strikes, tries to take a whole year off. <laughs> you remember on our wedding anniversary, I quoted the story of uh, Henry Ford, the senior, who on, her, on his golden wedding anniversary was asked, what is your secret of a, um, an enduring and happy wedded life? His answer was simple. It's, this, the question, it's the answer of an auto or car maker. And what is that? Stick to one model. And that, that's also my secret. <laughs> anyway, um, the um, effort to look younger than the First Lady is a hopeless cause. It's one of those causes I gave up a long, long time ago. Um, well, um, I don't know what uh, she does, but whatever it is, she is obviously succeeding, and um, succeeding, alas, at my expense. Of course, there is a true story, a typical anecdote that has happened in the palace. And sometime last year, there was a palace visitor from another country, and he had come to call on us in Malacanian. During his call, it seems that he bypassed the palace aides and escort, and he formally announced, before he could be formally announced to me, I, he came face to face with uh, the young Mrs. Marco. Impeccably polite and diplomatic, he engaged her in conversation and forthwith asked 
about the health of her father. <laughs> Meaning again, alas, the health of the president. You can imagine his chagrin, my mild embarrassment and Imelda's amusement when I walked into the room and said, I see that you have met my wife. <laughs> and as astonishing as this event may seem, it has happened quite often. <laughs> I've sometimes wondered whether the irrational humors about my health are due to the contrast Imelda and I present in public. <laughs> Me dutifully looking my age and see defiantly turning back the clock. <laughs> what is the secret of it all? No one knows. Um, and she perhaps uh, will not be able to say, but I will venture a guess. I think perhaps it's the energy she burns every day to do the many things that are her passion and obsession. It has to do with satisfaction, a sense of fulfillment. She derives from her service to others and from the innumerable projects for people and country. A writer has seriously suggested even that Einstein's great discovery of relativity also posited the timeless truth that pleasure is energy that what we expend in delightful and purposeful work is again turned into new energy. In short, we become young by doing. When you retire and do nothing, you're dead. <laughs> now, do you know why I keep running for president? <laughs> I finally drove my point. I think I should stop. <laughs> many of you uh, do know, and many of you uh, will surely join me, um, that uh, we have not known anyone with such energy for work like uh, the uh, first uh, lady, this woman whom I am proud and privileged to claim as uh, my wife. <laughs> I heard somebody at the um, edge of the crowd um, talking Soto Bose, I think, when I said, stick to one model. And uh, he said, yes, if it's Imelda. Now, a poet, let me close with the poet's uh, two lines, who said, all other goods by fortune's hand are given. A wife is the peculiar, peculiar gift of heaven. Shall I say that all over again? Yeah. Most goods by fortune's hand is given. A wife is a gift from heaven. Yeah. On her birthday, therefore, I can say this, and I can say amen to the poet, and to this priceless gift that I have received. Let me now say, happy birthday, Imelda. Thank you.